Hi, I'm Mike Brady from ChemStore, and today I'd like to show you around our brand new lithium ion battery storage unit we have here behind me. Let's go. The store is divided into three main storage sections. The left bay is storage section A, the middle, storage section B, and the hinge doors here on the right are the quarantine area or section C. Sections A and B are the new battery storage areas. Let's take a closer look. The padlock can be found under the shroud here. Once that's released, the doors slide open. Section A is divided into six different bay locations. These are labeled numbers A1 to A6 here. The sticker can be used as a centering point when loading the pallets. The sticker lines up with the center of the pallet. Each of the bays have free flowing rollers from front to back, and it's a first in, last out, pushback system. The central smaller rollers here have a braked roller that you can see at the front, which helps slow down the pallet as it approaches towards the front. You can see in the top of each section, the galvanized spiral duct. This is delivering air conditioned air throughout the store to maintain the correct temperature. There's a light at the top of each bay to help illuminate when loading or unloading. You can see in the top of each section, the heat detectors. These help us identify exactly where a fire might occur within the store and alert the alarm appropriately. Section B is identical to section A, storing good lithium ion batteries. Section C here is the quarantine area. This is where you bring batteries that are suspected of damage or are showing signs of failure. Let's take a look. The left door opens with this shooting bolt, which is pulled up and then a quarter turn to lock. So inside the quarantine area, you can see the air return duct at low level. There's an air supply duct at high level the heat detector mounted on each level. And under the, under the grating here, we've got static flooring. So you can just drop pallets or drop loose items onto this area. And any spillage or liquid would just simply drain through into the bund below for dealing with at a later date. When opening or closing the quarantine hinge doors, there's a pull cord latch system. It's operated like this. Just to help keep the doors stable in the high winds. And they can be released the same way. For closing. On the right hand side of the store you have the main control room. This houses the electrical panels and the air handling system that monitors the airflow. To the left of the control room door you have the main light switch that controls the lights in the control room and all the storage areas. To the left of that you have the main emergency call point. This is used by an operator if he's in trouble or needs emergency assistance. It can simply be operated by hitting the button like this. This can be deactivated by pulling the button. Situated above the control room door here is a traffic light system. Quite simply, as an operator, you should only enter the store if the green light is showing. This means everything is normal and the systems are behaving as they should do. If there's a red light showing, this means the store is in an emergency state. There's either a fire detected or an operator has hit the emergency button. The amber light means there's an operational fault with the store and an engineer must be called to try and rectify it. Above each store area, there's a red and green flashing traffic light. Again, simply, the green light means everything is safe to use. The red light means there's a, a fire warning in that bay and you should not approach the store. So let's take a look inside the control room and I'll show you around some of the key features. So inside the control room, there's two main panels. Under normal situations, you should see three green lights and the power on indicator on the far panel. So on the left panel, you should see three green lights. The first indicates we have mains power onto the panel and that it's live. The second green light means we've got air flowing through the air handling system and is under normal airflow rates. The lower green light means there's power to the circulatory fan and everything is acting normally. This rotary switch controls the fan. Under normal operations, it should be set to auto like this. For maintenance purposes, you can turn this off like this. You'll see the power drops to the fan and also the top green airflow lamp turns off. This can also be set to hand, which means the system is on all the time. 
This lower red lamp, if illuminated, indicates an electrical trip with the supply fan. If this button is illuminated, it means there's a thermal trip on the supply fan. It can be reset by pushing it. The extension panel to the right also has a number of lamps. Under normal conditions, the green power lamp will be on. If the heat detectors in the store are activated, this lamp will illuminate. If the emergency lone worker alarm is pushed, this lamp will illuminate. The alarm mute button can be pushed just to kill the sirens inside the control room. This won't affect the actual alarm signals or the processes at all, it just mutes the alarms. This is the main Delta touchscreen control. In the top left corner, you've got a digital calendar so you can control when the system turns on and off. You have a log in the center of the supply temperature from the air handling system and the actual return air temperature of the store. You have alarms such as airflow, currently on and normal, airflow fault, which is currently normal. And then you have the two emergency loan worker alarm and the heat detector alarms currently off. Here is how you access the air handling unit parameters. As you can see from the graphic, the air is flowing in this direction with a return air temperature currently at 19.8, through the heat system, which is currently at 100% heating capacity. The fan is rotating, there's power running to the fan, and also the airflow is normal. The rim set point can be adjusted by simply changing this box here, hitting exit to save. The heat detector fire panel can be accessed here. This shows a map of all the heat detectors within the store. Section A, one to six, section B, one to six, and the quarantine section C1 and C2. Simply return to the home screen by pushing the icon. In the bottom corner, you have an alarm log, which helps you identify the most recent alarms. These can be scrolled through simply here and return to the main screen. So that's all from me. Thanks very much for listening. Visit the website.